Ezra from the British Republic Library, and this is an online story time. Today is the second in our series of STEM-themed story times, and we're going to cover the T in STEM, which means technology. Technology is when you take knowledge that you have and use it to invent new tools or devices. And some examples of technology that you can probably think of are things like computers and robots and cars and trucks. But you know, any tool can really be considered technology. Back in when cavemen first started making tools and figuring out how to do certain things, for them using a stone to chop something up, that was an example of technology. So our first fun book that we're gonna to read today is called Doug Unplugged by Dan Yaccarino. And you can see that this book is about a robot, but this robot, it's not just about how a robot is made or how he works. This robot is gonna go out into the world and find out more about how the world works. So this is Doug. He's a robot, obviously. Each morning his parents plug him in to fill him up with lots and lots of facts. They love their little robot and want him to be the smartest robot ever. Today you'll be learning all about the city, said his mom. Happy downloading, said his dad. So Doug learned about many city things about populations and trash cans and manholes and fountains and fire engines. But then something caught his eye. It was, what's that? A pigeon! Doug had just learned that pigeons travel in groups called flocks, but he didn't know they made such a funny cooing sound. Can you coo like a pigeon? Like, hoo 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 And now he wondered if there were more things he could learn if he went out into the city. So, Doug unplugged. And right away he learned that if you flew into a flock of pigeons, they scattered. Doug knew that cities were teeming with people, but he discovered that crowded sidewalks made it hard to see where you were going. Doug knew that skyscrapers had strong steel frames so they could be many stories high. But he was amazed by the view from the top of one. He could see everything. Doug learned many more things about the city, like wet cement feels squishy under your feet. And fire engine sirens are loud. And some garbage cans are smelly. And manholes are dark. Pretty flowers grow out of cracks in the sidewalk. And taxi stop if you raise your hand. And the cool water in the park fountain feels good on a hot day. Then Doug came across something that wasn't in any of his downloads. Want to play? asked the little boy. And Doug didn't know anything about playing, but he was happy to learn. So Doug learned how to play hide and seek and a new game called tag. And Doug found out there were all sorts of different ways to play. Are these ways that you've played before? Where do you do these things? And he learned that it was nice to have a friend to play with. I don't see my mom or dad, his friend said, sounding scared. And then Doug remembered a way to get a better view of things. So, do you remember what Doug knew? What do you think they're going to do now? How was Doug going to help his friend? Zoom! They flew way up high. There they are! the little boy shouted. When they landed, the little boy ran to his mother and father. Doug thought about his own parents. Suddenly he wanted to tell them everything he had learned today. So, Doug's gonna fly home. 
The best thing he learned was that if you want to show your parents you love them, you should give them a great big hug. And his parents thought he was the smartest robot ever. And that's the end. technology activity, but don't worry, this one doesn't use what we think of technology like computers or TV. We're going to make a picture out of little squares, and this is kind of a pre-coding activity that teaches kids about how to build things out of the pieces that they already have. So I have a whole bunch of little squares here, and I'm going to start out by trying to make them into a bigger square. See, I use the pieces that I have to make a new thing. Now I'm gonna make them into a smiley face. I'll use some blue ones for the eyes. We can let the white one be the nose. And we'll make a green mouse. So there you go, face. And I actually did the same thing with Legos. So you can see an example of another way that you could do this at home if you don't happen to have flannel and a flannel board. And you can use these to make any kind of shape. I could make a tree, I could make a house, you, whatever you guys think of. Um, it's a way of practicing coding by using pieces to put, uh, putting pieces together um, to get a certain result. Okay, let's read Penguin Up by Marcy Colley. Orville was small, but his friends were big, and their adventures were bigger. Orville longed for big adventures, too. One day, he announced his plans for his biggest and best adventure yet. Okay, it says, learn to fly, climb a ladder, catapult, or make option four for Orville's big adventure to the moon. He's got some fun ideas there. And you know what everybody else said? All the way up there? Is that a good idea? But Orville, you're so small, and the moon is so far away. And Orville flippered out. I can do this myself! So he tried to flap. Kerplop! He tried to climb. Whack! He tried to catapult. Baling! And he landed in the reptile house. Orville was pretty sure the boa constrictor was not trying to hug him. Ouch! But still, Orville kept trying. He borrowed from the zookeeper, he nicked from the trash cans, and he built and built. What is he building? And with a shake, shake, shake of a half-filled soda bottle, the ship was ready for a liftoff. It was perfect! and perfectly penguin sized. Well, he did a pretty good job. It looks good to me. You think he's gonna get to the moon? So with a trembling flipper salute, he took his place at the controls. Three, two, one. I can do this myself! And blast off! Whoosh! The ship zipped through the night sky, through clouds, over stars, and straight to the moon. Boom! Kerplum! Kaboom! Orville landed. His stomach felt queasy. His spacesuit felt squeezy. Now that he'd made it, what would he do?
So he took a small step. He hopped. He did a little dance and tripped. <gasps> He somersaulted with stars, cartwheeled over craters, and giggled for all the galaxy to hear. It was the biggest and best adventure yet! I'm doing it myself! He cheered! But his tiny voice was swallowed up in the starry blackness. And Orville stopped. He was all alone. His stomach grew queasier. His spacesuit felt squeezier. He shivered. And a note fell out of his pocket. And do you know what this note says? It says, you're our penguinot, And we know you can do this. Who do you think sent him that note? He missed his friends. So Orville closed his eyes tightly and imagined they were there. When he was safely back in his ship, he looked toward home. He couldn't wait to tell everyone about his big adventure. Sure, Orville's friends were big, but now the proud Penguinot felt big too. And biggest of all, being together was out of this world. And that's the end.